Hey guys, welcome back. This is my third Pulp Basics video and we are going to talk about setting up our objective function and our constraints. This is a very difficult video and I'm really going to try to cover all the tiny little details of constraints and objective functions because um, it really does get difficult. Um, and I'm also going to use our facility problem again. And I just want to say that when you're doing um, problems like this in Pulp, it is so important to um, do your problem on paper beforehand or at least, um, maybe not on paper, but at least have all these equations ready to go. Um, because if, if you're trying to do it in your head, it gets so confusing with all the different subscripts, all the different summations, um, the for all sign, um, all of that, and it, it just makes it so much easier when you're um, determining whether or not you need a for loop um, before creating your constraint and whether or not you need loops within the constraints and um, whether or not you need to use a summation sign. Um, so just make sure you do everything beforehand. It makes it so much easier. Um, and I'm just going to also include right now um, some really important questions you want to ask yourself when you're setting these up. Um, the first question you want to think about is, is there a for all sign? Um, and if you've done it, well, for everyone who, is, who knows how to do um, linear programming, um, we know what a for all sign is. And we know what it means, um, and it's usually just in the constraints. We don't see for all signs in our minimization or maximization equation. Um, so in other words, you might be saying, um, um, like this constraint right here is saying, make sure the amount service from com customer I to facility J is less than uh, the demand of that uh, customer. Um, if that location is chosen and it's uh, for all I and it's for all J um, so that's just really important to look at because you do need a for loop before setting up that constraint um, so we're gonna start off with the objective function um, of this problem but I wanna just finish off those questions that we need to think about so is there a for all sign um, are you summing anything or adding or whatever you want to say are you summing anything and if so what are you summing um, another question uh, what is the constraint sign in other words is it uh, an equals is it less than or equal to less than greater than or equal to blah 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 um, and then the next are their um, decision variables with multiple subscripts. And we talked about this in the video before. Um, and are their parameters um, with two um, sets included? So like this parameter is the transportation cost from facility one to each customer, facility two to each customer etc. Um, so this does have two subscripts um, in the parameter and that's really important when you're setting the constraints um, to make sure you do your for loops correctly. Um, and then the last one is do any... Um, oh, I guess that was the last question. Um, so to start off with this objective function, um, it's important to know that you, for all the object for the objective function and for all the constraints you need to say prob because um, we are setting all this information into our um, problem variable that we already created and we're saying plus equals because um, basically what that means is prob equals prob plus whatever you are adding um, so for our first uh, for this objective function what does it say we are minimizing um, the sum of f is let's see what is f f I'm not seeing where that no oh, f is up here the activation cost at each site times whether or not that site was chosen um, so we are summing that over the cost times the location for every single um, location we're then going to add that to um, the sum of all the costs from facility to customer times um, 
the amount that was serviced from that facility to that customer. And we're summing that over for each customer and for each facility. Um, so to start off, um, we see this summation sign and we, we do not see a for all sign, we, so we skip over that question. Um, so are you summing anything? Yes. Um, what are you summing? We're summing the uh, activation costs and our decision variable. So um, we want to say LP sum, that's our function we're going to use. Um, and so let's look at our first variable. Um, that's actually a parameter um, and we already set that up right here, our activation cost. Um, we're going to say act cost, you use the same exact name. Um, and then we need to put in brackets, um, we're basically indexing this dictionary. Um, so again, we already said in previous videos that we are going to use J to index facility and I to index customers. So we're going to say act cost J. And again, you can see that right here that they use J as a subscript. Um, and we are multiplying that um, asterisk times our decision variable, the Y. And that was our um, use vars, so whether or not we are using that. Um, so that value is going to be 1 if we do use that location, and if not, it's going to be 0. Um, so that cost is not going to get multiplied. Um, so use vars, and we're saying j again, because um, that's what it is in our equation. Um, so um, you might be wondering what to do now that um, we have these um, index letters but we don't have um, any sort of loop to specify um, which list to um, refer to so we're gonna say for J in facility you don't need a comma or any of that um, just have it directly after our equation so for J in facility parentheses and now we are gonna start a new summation so we're gonna say plus uh, LP sum. Um, what are we summing? We are summing over the act the cost from uh, facility to customer times the amount service. Um, so basically, we are uh, the next question we are going to look at is does our parameter have multiple subscripts? And it does. Um, so what you do when a parameter has multiple subscripts, we are still indexing the dictionary. So we are going to have brackets again. Um, we're just going to say we had transp as our name and we're going to say bracket. Um, this is important. We are um, indexing J first because we did put facility first um, in our dictionary. But if we had done it the other way around and done the uh, cost um, from, if we had started with customer and then made a new list of all the facilities and the costs, then you would put I first. But since this is first, we want to go into our dictionary and specify first the facility and then go into that specific um, list for that facility and find the cost. So I is going to be the next um, bracket and we are multiplying that by our decision variable X and so we look at the question um, are there decision variables with multiple subscripts and the answer is yes so what we do when we have multiple subscripts we already um, told we already set this variable to have um, to refer to two sets um, but we need to uh, specify that again um, in our objective function so we're gonna say serve underscore vars and then we're gonna do this a little differently since it's not really indexing we're saying parentheses, uh, or we're actually saying bracket parentheses i comma j and that's just what you do when you have a decision variable with two subscripts. Finish off that bracket um, and then again we're um, looking at are we summing anything and what are we summing so we are summing over um, all the i and all the j um, we want to just go ahead and say for J first, since that came first in our brackets, for J in facility, and then you don't need, you just need a space between these two loops, you don't need a comma, you say for I in customers. And then if you'd like to, you can put a description, I'm not going to do that for the sake of time, but, um, so that is how you 
set up your objective function for this problem. Um, and hopefully that all those questions will help you with other types of problems. I'm going to do one more example um, for an objective function. It's a very simple example. Um, it was with the diet problem, so we were minimizing the cost of a certain diet, and um, our decision variable was the amount of each ingredient to use. So, um, actually, I already did this, so we're just I'm just going to pull that up for the sake of time. Let's see. Diet problem. So, this was our objective function. We were summing um, the price times the uh, food uh, amount of food used for that food and it was um, summing over for each food we weren't doing it for all foods because in our objective function we are summing um, so there's another example if you just want to look at that really quickly so I'm actually gonna turn this video into uh, just an objective function tutorial so go look at my next video to see how to set up our constraints for our problems um, again just to clarify um, we don't have any for all signs in our objective functions, so these loops are just referring to our summations. I hope this video was helpful, and comment below if you have any questions. Bye!